There are eight planets in our solar system, Earth being the third one from the sun. What makes Earth so unique? Water. Water is what makes Earth a very unique place to live. <laughs> I got a question for you in this audience. If you know the answer, please raise your hand, I'll call on you. How much of the surface of the Earth is covered by water? 74%. Very, very, very close right there, Tom. Because I was reading a 71%. As long as we hit that 70%, we're within a range of correctness. 71% of the surface of the Earth is covered by water. To me, that's just absolutely amazing. Now, according to NASA, they say we actually know more about the surface of the moon than we do our own oceans. Think about that. We know more about the surface of, the, of our moon and rock that orbits around our Earth than our own oceans, which are right here on our own planet. We know more about that. Think about that. That's pretty amazing. Today, I want to talk to one specific individual. I want to talk to the person that has an adventurous side to them. I want to talk to somebody that likes to see new things, that likes to use cool gadgets and tools to measure things. I'm talking to the person in this room that has the heart of a spirit and the spirit of an explorer. I'm talking to you today. I'm hoping today that I want to talk to you about your newfound love, scuba diving. The things that I want to cover within scuba diving, the equipment that you use to breathe underneath the water, some places to go, and I want to talk about the extracurricular activities or the inner disciplines within scuba diving. The equipment. Now, unless you've got gills <laughs> and you can bring underneath water, you're going to need some equipment with you. Interesting fact for you SCUBA is actually an acronym. It stands for Self Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. And that is the basic equipment that you need to breathe underwater. And that's what we're going to cover today. So, unless you've got those gills, you're going to need an air supply. And the way you take your air down there with you is an air tank. You're going to need something just like this to bring your air with you. The next thing you're going to need is what we call a regulator, also known as an octopus. This is your lifeline for your air supply while breathing underneath the water. You'll breathe out of it just like this. This will attach to your scuba tank. Very important piece of equipment to have. Make sure you take good care of it, because it's going to keep you alive. The other thing you're going to need underneath the water is a submersible pressure gauge, also known as an SPG. This is how you're going to ascertain your depth. It's also going to have be how you ascertain how much air you still have in your tank. Those are two key things that you need to look at and monitor very closely throughout your dive. If you end up low on air, you need the surface. If you end up without air, you could put yourself in a very dangerous situation, one that could be fatal. So make sure you monitor that very, very closely. The other thing that you need is what we call a BCD, and that is this piece of equipment right here. This will attach to your regulator, and this is how you're going to control your buoyancy underneath the water. The way you control your buoyancy is you have this air bladder in the back. You'll simply add air to it or take air away as you so need fit to make sure that you have the right buoyancy underneath the water. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the basic scuba equipment that you need to dive. Now, once you've learned to go dive, let's talk about the places that you can go. I want to talk about some local places here that are right in our backyard. Lake Tahoe, one of the most beautiful high alpine lakes in the world. A remarkable place to dive. Things that I find personally interesting about Lake Tahoe is the visibility. You can see on a very clear day, 70 to 100 feet underneath the water. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's turquoise waters. It's, you have this experience it for your own self. The other thing that I find unique about Lake Tahoe is how void it is of life. You hardly you don't see any plant life. You hardly ever see fish. The most life you're going to see is going to be probably another scuba diver like yourself. <laughs> this is the truth. It's just a it's void of life. It's absolutely amazing. Another place to dive here locally is the Sparks Marina. 
The Sparks Marina is quite the opposite of Lake Tahoe. Very murky. On a good day, you're looking at maybe 10 feet of visibility. On a bad day, or a typical day, maybe three feet of visibility. So you can get lost pretty easily. One thing that's neat about the Sparks Marina, they've actually sunk or placed an aircraft in there. It's a nice little thing to go check out. So you've seen it, it's pretty neat. Let's talk about like the Pacific Ocean. It's right next to us, it's very close. The Pacific Ocean is my favorite place to dive. Full of life, full of activities to do. But ladies and gentlemen, if you notice right here, I've highlighted vacations in a different color. You want to forever change the way you're going to take trips around this world. I promise you that when you learn how to scuba dive. Because you're going to be thinking now in terms of diving. When I say, you worked a long, worked a long year, you take a vacation, so you know I want to do something. Maybe I'll go to the Grand Canyon, check, out the, check that out. Maybe I'll go check out Mount Rushmore. Or you might say, you know what, let's go, to, let's go to Hawaii this year. I've seen that Nemo a few times with the kids. That looks like an interesting place. But this year, I'm not going to sit back on the beach and drink Mai Tais. This year, I want to get into the water. And I want to go swimming with those turtles. I want to see them face to face like I've never seen them before. <clears throat> maybe, it's maybe, maybe you don't want to see the turtles. Maybe you want to dive with the manta rays. That's an awesome thing to see, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome thing to see. The interdisciplines within scuba diving. Photography, videography, these are a couple of my favorite things to do. You, awesome things. High altitude diving, you'll learn to do that if you dive here in Lake Tahoe. That's considered high altitude diving. Different things to measure, different things, the way air pressure works in our body, the different things of, of air and how we behave to it at high altitude as opposed to being at sea level. So you'll want to learn about that. Deep diving, spear fishing, that's one of my favorite. I love being able to go to the ocean and harvest the fish out of the ocean. I've been able to provide some excellent meals for my family, lobsters, scallops, lingcods, fish fries, ladies and gentlemen, it's awesome being able to harvest fish from the ocean. Boat diving, dry suit diving, night diving, if you like to dive at nighttime, fish identification, if you like to, if you're one of those people that likes to know the different types of life that are out there, and able to identify one life form from the next, that might be your thing. As I said in the beginning, NASA says we know more about the surface of our moon than we know about our own oceans. Don't be like NASA. <laughs> Don't be like them. Don't be like everyone else who doesn't know what's underneath the oceans. Learn how to scuba dive. Get out there. Explore your oceans. Explore your lakes. Explore this vast body of water that covers over 70% of the surface of the Earth. Get out and learn to scuba dive. Bellicose now.